Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this presentation from World Voices on uh, AI and legalities. And uh, I'm Dan Leonard, president of World Voices, joined by Dave Corvassier, uh, president emeritus of World Voices and uh, a founding member. And our guest, Rob Siglin-Paglia, who is also a founding member of WOVO. He's been with us since the early days. Our legal counsel, in fact. He's also our corporate counsel. Uh, but Rob graduated cum laude from University of Connecticut with a Bachelor's of Arts degree mo majoring in political science. He also attended and graduated from Pace University School of Law with a Juris Doctor degree. And Rob is also author of the book Voice Over Legal, which hit number one on the Amazon bestseller list for entertainment law books, of which is not a big category, but there must be one. <laughs> Anyway, uh, welcome, Rob. I mean, we everybody's talking about AI. You know, we mm -hmm. see we see the ads in Facebook of it's almost like human voices, or it's better than human voices, or it's <laughs> all these things. Is it really a threat to everybody? Why don't we just start that way, and then we can get to some of the other points that we want to get to. Sure, it's a threat. I mean, it can put uh, live actors and voice actors right out of business. Um, you know, maybe it would serve us to if you could recap uh, Bev Standing's case. That was the first one that really yeah, uh, sure. got everybody's attention. Would it be pertinent to talk about how that sure. came about and how you resolved it? Sure. Yeah. So what happened with Bev was that she had uh, recorded, um, like back in 2018 time frame, she had got hired for a job to just record a bunch of random lines. They told her it was for a translation job, um, for Chinese translation which is the red flag right there, China. Um, and a couple of years later, her daughter heard her voice on TikTok as the text-to-speech voice. And so she contacted her mom's like, hey, you're you're this is you're on TikTok. And she's like, wait a minute, I never, I never did any work for TikTok. So she traced it back to that job she had done for the Chinese translation. And what we did was we uh, copyrighted those files because she had done them from her home studio. And we've uh, filed a copyright infringement case in the Southern District of New York. And, you know, TikTok didn't even know that they, they had purchased the files. They had gotten them, not illegally, they had gotten them from that company that, that did the, the, uh, the, the, the voice, that, the work that, she, that did for them. And they were nowhere to be found. Uh, Lord knows where they were. They were probably somewhere deep in China. Um, so TikTok ended up selling the case and, you know, making things yeah. kind of right, <laughs> but you know, it just the whole way that it happened is, it, you know, it's, it's just a kind of a wake up cause. You know, you have to yeah. figure out where your your files are going to end up when you hit the send button. You know, where where are they going to go? So yeah, you have to trace them. Uh, you know, but, you know contractually think, protect yourself now. And like so. online casting, it's not going away. AI voices are not going to go away either. I know of some uh, professional voice actors who are going ahead and licensing their voice with a. Uh, with some online service yep. that can yep. clone their voice. Well, you know, where do we decide what's right for us? I mean, that's really a personal decision. So right now it's AI is still a way much in its infancy. Well, I mean, not really because it's being been developed. It's being developed for a long time. You know, it's been at least 10 or 20 years where it's AI has gotten to this point. Now what we're seeing now is we're seeing the, the end results. We're seeing the marketing. We're seeing the business plans coming through. We're seeing the way to make money. You know, as a matter of fact, Nvidia. If anyone has Nvidia stock, you know how AI, you know, can make you tons of money because the stock. They just uh, just yesterday uh, put out their earnings, and their earnings have gone, you know, through the roof, and their stock price has gone through the roof, and you know, it's gone up six hundred percent in the past couple of years. Nvidia is one of the companies that are at the forefront of AI for not, not necessarily for voiceovers, but for AI in general technology. So the technology now it's actually started to make a push consumer wise, business wise. So this is why we're seeing these issues come up now, but these issues, I've been talking about these issues for years. I, I did a presentation about this in 2019 back in <laughs> voiceover Atlanta, you know, what to look for in a contract. And, you know, so it, it, this, it's been building up to this. So now, now the results. So now 
voice actors just need to stay on top of these things to figure out when they want to jump in or if they want to jump in to see if there's a way to make money as a cloning the cloning the voice. So there are opportunities out there. Some voice actors are like, I want nothing to do with it. Other voice actors are embracing it. So it's really, and same thing with actors. It's, it, it's the same thing with on camera, you know, on camera. I, I've, I just talked to a filmmaker the other day who was doing a, a complete AI film. He's doing it one hundred percent AI, no humans, all voice and faces that he's going to just generate. So, and we, we can talk about the different, different uh, the styles of AI that you have to, you know, the different uses for AI that people should be aware of because there's really three big uses. You can clone someone's voice direct or clone someone's image direct and use that, you know, so James Earl Jones, a celebrity, you can you know, clone him and put him right in star Wars, just like they did or Billy Joel's new video <laughs> where, where they cloned, you know, they took an actor and they put Billy Joel's face on it and, you know, made him young again. Right. So that's one use. Same thing with voice. You can clone your voice. There's machine learning which is another usage and voice actors are getting paid big bucks right now for machine learning. So all what that is, is you're going to record a bunch of files and then they're using those files to train, to make AI sound more natural. They put the breath sounds in, they put the pauses in, you know, all those things. It's trying to emulate human speech. So that that's voice actors can be hired to machine learn. Same thing with actors. They could be, Hire just to, to teach teach AI. The third is the most, the one that's the most disturbing to me, and the one that should be most disturbing to all, and that's generative AI. What generative AI is? That's where the computer creates an entire new something, entire new likeness, an entire new voice, and what it does is it scours all the files on the internet and comes up. With something new so for instance I, I want a picture of a, a dog right and i want ai to generate it so what the computer does is it goes out it scours every single picture of every dog that they can find online and it comes back with a, a unique looking dog so it does the same thing with voices and it does the same thing with likenesses so that's the part that's the concern that the community has and that we should have because how are we going to know if they used a little piece of our voice, our voice to come up with a new voice? So, how and this is actually, yourself, you know, how do you protect yourself from that, uh, Rob? Uh, right. So, there, there's technology now that's coming up, that's come, that's out there, um, that is being created. So you can you can trace you can trace your voice, um, and you can opt out of those machine learning and doing those jobs so that you're you're not. You're not at least being illegally using your voice. So, you know, you can't really prevent somebody from using F files that are out there. There's really no way to prevent that unless you can digital, digitally watermark it, which that's what that's the technology that's coming. So, you know, with every new technology, there's a counter technology that comes out. So there's a bunch of counter technologies that are being developed. Where can you know, we so find stay that? tuned? Uh Davidi is one of the companies that are doing it. Um, they're not really out yet. So um, you know, just keep your eyes open for it because it's still, you know, and that's what the whole lawsuit is about that uh, New York Times brought against ChatGPT and the uh, the um, artists brought against ChatGPT. They're, they're trying to say generative AI should be a violation of copyright, but the courts are not, they're really not helping because they're saying, prove it. <laughs> prove that your voice mm -hmm. is part of the, prove that your article is part of that, that new article. Prove that your voice is part of that new voice. Prove that your face is part of that new likeness. Mm. So that that's the hard part, the proof. So it's a little behind the proof part's a little behind yet. So the technology will catch up, but right now it's a little behind. So So in the interim, while this is developing and you the software to detect is not quite out yet, is there a way that we can protect ourselves like with a contract or with a statement? No replacement. Yes. With a contract. Well, the first of all, the law is protecting us a little bit. There's a couple of things that happened. The copyright office has said that, uh, and they this has been their policy for a while. They're not going to copyright anything that uh, there's any generative AI in it. They're not going to copyright it. So, if you, you come up with an AI film that's generative AI, 
but they're not going to copyright it. So it's, they're not going to have any protection. So that's one kind of pushback. Um, you'd have to prove there's, they're coming up with standards and you have to prove that a majority of the work is human comes out of the mind and not from the computer. So there, there's guidelines for that, that they're still coming up with. And um, the, the second thing that happened is there, the, the um, FTC or the federal government just passed the anti-fraud law saying that, you know, any, any AI that's used to commit a scam, commit a fraud over phone lines or computer lines, it's, it's criminal. So, and the FTC enforces that. So, you know, like all those scams that you hear where, you know, they, they cloned a voice, to your, your kid's voice, and they call you on the phone and, and, you know, the same, give me, you know, I've been in an accident. I've been, you know, it sounds like you're a kid. I've been in an accident. I'm in jail. Send me $50,000 or, you know, then they're asking for a ransom kind of thing. You know, those are, those are the kind of scams that fall under that new act. Um, deep faking. So that, you know, I think the, the, the impetus behind the law was when there was that, the deep fake with Joe Biden during the Vermont campaign. I, that's when the, all this happened. The law got passed. I mean, obviously they've been talking about it for a while, but it, it actually pushed it over the finish line, I think. Um, so Rob, you're so, saying right now the, the best recourse is through the courts. I mean, how much time do you have in your day? You're about <laughs> the only one that we can turn to, it seems I've, like. I've got a whole floor full of cases right here that, you know, wow. for, for, you know, the, one of my cases, the, uh, uh, the company that had, uh, the comp- so the, a lot of the cases work start out from legitimate work. So one, but one of the cases, um, the company had paid the producer and the producer never got the talent to sign off. So the talent found our voice on a, on a, a database and then they paid to settle the case, but then they messed up and they put it back on the database. So now there was some pornographic stuff that was that a lot of pornographic stuff that was done using the, the cloned voice. So now they're paying again, but these are issues you know, that, that are happening all the time. There's, there are um, some of the, the, the uh, pay to plays are, they're not, they're promoting things like they're signing off on contracts, letting machine learning happen and, and not letting the talent know and stuff like that. So you got to be aware, like I said, where were the, your files Read the terms of service. are going, read the terms of service. And then, you know, Follow it, you know, make, make sure that you're asking questions, you know, if, if you, like, if you did an audition for a machine learning, for instance, and then you end up not agreeing to terms, make sure that the files get destroyed and that are still used because some, some of the places yep. are still, still using the files. So contracts. Well, talk about that new uh, Replica Studios contract. Uh, yes. SAG after recently negotiated with Replica Studios. Uh, yep. This was announced at CES, and and Fran Drescher called it a great example of AI being done right. So, mm-hmm. what's good and bad about this contract? So, the collective bargaining in the TV and film agreement and Replica Studios are there. It's similar. So, the disturbing thing about both of those things is that AI was not a band. Like that, you didn't didn't say. No AI, producers can't use it. So what they did was they set up parameters. So the Replica Studios contract, that's non-broadcast. So that that mirrors the parameters that are in the broadcast film and TV collective bargaining agreement. And basically what it says is if you do a job and you get paid for that job, if they want to clone your voice to for that job, for that project that's okay. You know, they set minimum pay that you need to get in that circumstance. Um, If they want to use the files for a future job, what the contracts say is that you, they have to get something from you specifically in writing, giving permission, and that they need to, uh, you need to negotiate pay. So they didn't really say what the pay it could be, except that has to be, minimum for the day. So, you know, like scale basically is what they said, (laughs) but you can, you can negotiate anything that you want because they didn't really set a, you know, this is the price. No, they just said, this is the minimum that has to be paid. Um, And then they also put in there that if, um, if there is a celebrity deceased person or celebrity, they can use 
those files that they have, you know, they can get the deceased person's voice print and make a or likeness and uh, make a clone, but they have to get the, the estates or the family's permission, right? And those permissions will uh, have to be specifically revoked. So they give the right to revoke them to the to the estates or to the to the actor. So what's that's, missing that's in, in that? a nutshell? Yeah, what's missing in that? What, what would you like to have seen written into that? Well, the other things that they the, so that's for the current projects. For future projects, they they can use those files, but they have to pay you. But as I mentioned before, what they allow is generative AI without payment. So. Those are the things that that's that's the real danger because there's no way to track it. That's the yeah. problem. So generative AI, if they use your, if you, yeah, you have to prove your, that they're using your likeness. So it have to be the close onus enough. The is on you then. Right. Have, or the likeness would have to be close enough. It'd have to, to find it to and your device yeah. or your face to be able to prove yeah. that, you know, that, 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 that's not allowed. Like that specifically is says it in the contract. If there is any, any resemblance. We have attendee likeness. questions we, we want to get to. Um, sure. One thing I want to bring up is in our last webinar with Janet Walton, the, the president, uh, CEO of, um, uh, Dan, help me out here, Sound uh, spot, sound, Sunspots. Um, she Sunspot. said it was very useful for her to have AI in certain circumstances. For instance, her husband uh, got dystonia and could no longer answer uh, client needs. And so they cloned his voice to be able to voice spots that they really liked his voice for. And she likes the fact that they can drop in tags or one or two words in a spot that that needs a change in the copy. Right. And and the voice actor is off, you know, in the Bahamas on vacation. Uh, there are some of those instances popping up that seem to be useful for voice actors. Yes, there are. It's a new movement I've seen actually, where the the uh, producers want that ability to add a you know fix a couple of words, add a tag. Um, not generate new things. And that's that's where the line has to be drawn. If they want to generate a new commercial, generate a new tag, that that's where the actor should still be paid. But if, if um, and that's kind of what the SAG contract says. If they want to use what you did for to fix that in that particular production, that it's okay. But you just have, you know, you have to be paid for the production. So if, as long as you're paid, they allow that usage for AI. So what what I think studios should do, and I know that there are some that are talking about doing this, is just get some kind of um, waiver or contract up front that they're going to say that the, if they're going to use your voice to clone and do simple things like that, like they used to do in the past, it's really no different in the, than when they you would do like five takes and they would take part, part of take one, two, three, you know, they or they right. take a word and combine yeah. it. It's really no different. So they're they're doing the same kind of thing, but they're just it's easier to. to to clone the voice and come up with the whole phrase and then piece it together. So I think is if they come up with some kind of, they should come up with some kind of waiver or contract that the actor signs that they know right up front, that that is a possibility. And they, they will know that the, the files are going to get destroyed. The clone files are going to get destroyed after the production that they're not going to store them anywhere. Um, that if they're, they're not going to use it for future productions, um, unless you get paid for it. So if all that's spelled out in an agreement, I think that it'd be more accepting and for voice actors because it's the unknown factor, of course. That's the scary part is, you know, they're using my voice for clone and, you know, it could be used for, for you know, Seems like, like I said, yeah, it like could be used for porn, you know, something like that, you know, like the, the worst fear that I was telling you about what that happened to one of my clients. So, so Dan, uh, how about some questions from our attendees? Yeah, let's. Uh, if anybody has a question for Rob about AI, because we're always seem to be asking these questions, and you know, if you, again, if you go on Facebook, you're going to get a trillion different opinions about that. Uh, but if you have a question, put it in the chat. There's a chat uh, box at the bottom of the Zoom page. We've all been on Zoom; it's always there. Uh, and if you have a question for Rob specifically about this particular topic, throw it in there. And uh, so that would be the best way to get your questions answered right now. Actually, Dan, is them them coming in as panelists? They need to use the Q and A block and not chat. Oh, it's oh, it's in the oh the Q and A bot, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Carry on. <laughs> so, do we have questions yet? Yeah, uh, Elizabeth asked one. Uh, 
Following on with the Bev standing key strategy, she was able to copyright because she recorded the files herself. But if she had recorded those files in a studio, would she have been without recourse? Uh, that a recourse that would only have been um, likeness, um, violation of the use of likeness. And we also put that in as a count. Um, but copyright is much stronger legally than violation of the use of your likeness because copyright is basically a strict liability. You just prove that they use your files without your permission, and then the, the, the statute gives an amount of damages that the court can award, and you don't have to you don't have to prove that you were damaged. You just have to show that they have used your work without permission, and then the court decides on a sliding scale from like five hundred dollars per violation to fifty five thousand dollars per violation, you know where it falls. So it's uh, if she had recorded in another studio, she wouldn't have had that option. It would have just been illegal use of likeness. Yeah. Lynn Darlington is an interesting question. Um, concern about pulling audio from our websites. Have we yep. seen any examples of that? Your everybody's any audio that's out on the internet right now on YouTube, on your website, anywhere is being it's right. As we sit here, it's being scanned billions of times. That's what generative AI does. So, Yes, it's, it's a, that's the technology. Uh, and so the only way you can avoid it is get the, you know, when the counter technology comes out, trace it or don't go on the internet. That, those are the your, those are your courses right now. To, so. All right. We've got one from Phil Colacotronis who asks, do you think nowadays some potential clients ask for auditions just to do voice harvesting for AI purposes? Mm, or should we... Yeah, should we proceed there as we always have? Absolutely. I've seen cases of that. The auditions are, are they give you hints. You can see the little red flags in the in the specs, but their their intention is to to use it for machine learning. Most of the time, they're not going to go public facing with it because they you know then they get snagged, but if it or sued, but they they're they're harvest they're using it for machine learning for the most of the, you know a lot of times or. I mean, generative AI is, could be, it, you'll never know, like, because it's just like that's the computer scanning it, but they can put it up for storage and then it will be part of generative AI. But again, that there's really, you don't know about, about that. So that's, that just happens. Um, the machine learning part, that's the part, you know, like you can get money, you should get paid for that. Like, so if they're, if they're doing an audition and they're legitimate, they'll say that, you know, if we like these files, we'll use them for machine learning or a model. And I see there are companies that, that do that, but there are companies that are sneaky. And for some reason, I mean, I'm going to say this and people may, maybe they say I'm, I'm a, a racist or something, but China, like they come out of China for, for you know, if you see something out of China, I, those are the contracts I see. They're the ones that they do sneaky stuff. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's just because they don't really have the same copyright laws that we have here or, you know, that you can't trace them or whatever. Get away with it. Yeah. They get away with it. Yeah. So it's, if you see it, if you see company from China, immediately put up a red flag. Immediately. You have to put it up because it could lend, it end up in the wrong hands and then you're not going to be able to find you're not going to be able to find them. Hopefully, you know, if they're doing th contracting with a legitimate company, then it's going to be, it, it's not the ideal situation, but it's easier to track them down. And, and if you need to bring a lawsuit, bring a lawsuit, you know, if they're using like one of the big, the big companies, if they're, because a lot of the big companies also contract, they all do, they contract with smaller contractors. And some of them were out of China, you know, like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, they contract with studios all over the world. Some of them are in China. So sometimes it's legit, but if you can find out the end company that they're working for, that's, that's the ideal situation. You know, not just a blind, this company from China is taking my audition or my files and I don't know what's going to happen from there. Yeah. Once again, if you have a question for Rob, because again, we've all been asking questions about this, which is why we've brought Rob in here to talk with us this morning. There is a Q&A bot at the bottom of the uh, Zoom page, and you can ask your questions right there because we want to hear from you because this is for you. Uh, so, Rob, it's, it's, getting, 
it's getting really, really bad out there as far as everybody thinking that they're going to get cloned. Are we seeing lots of examples of this? I mean, I'm, you've, obviously you were saying that uh, you've been getting a lot of stuff, that your inbox is pretty full of people asking about this. How bad is it out there, especially in the voiceover world? Because we know they're doing it in, in, in video and, and various other things. And, uh, but what about specifically with, uh, with voiceover? What exactly are you seeing? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not seeing blatant cloning, which is a good thing. So I'm not seeing people, a lot of deceit, some auditions maybe, but it's more for, you know, the, the sneaky stuff, machine learning. It's not really cloning where they're using the voice on a, on a database. But what I'm seeing a lot of is people that had done all the jobs five years ago <laughs> where they were doing it, you know, saying all these lines, all of a sudden they're on a database somewhere or a bunch of databases. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing the results now with people coming forward. Hey, why is my voice on here and here and here and here? Well, give me the contract that you signed when you, you know, you did the job. Then it, it says right there, they're going to do it for cloning. They're going to do it for commercial uses, this, that, the other thing. Read the fine print. So I'm seeing a lot of that. Um, and then people, you know, are, saying, can I get out of this? It's really difficult to get out of that. It, there may be a reason to get out of it, but it's, it's you know, it, you got to really, you got to have a strategy <laughs> as the, or a reason why you could break the, the contract. So well, you said I, you had like four cases right there on your desk. I mean, can you speak generically about the nature of those cases? Yes, yes. So th those cases, you know, one of them I already told you about with, with the, uh, the company that had, um, mistakenly put the voice back up on a database and then it was used for pornographic stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and then a couple of the other ones deal with um, some of the beta plays that are, that are giving or they're doing these auditions, but then, then they're not coming to agreements, but they're just allowing the, the companies that to use the, the, <laughs> the files anyway and not paying the talent. So those are a couple of uh, cases that I have. Um, I've got a couple of cases where uh, there's no contract and then there's, there's uh, some kind of cloning or some kind of machine learning that's being used. So if there's no contract, that's actually better for the talent because then you could do a cease and desist because you still own your files. You still own, you know, where, where your work's going to be used. You own that right. Um, or you, and you also own your likeness. So if you're not, well, you don't own your likeness, but you have the right to say where your likeness is used. So I don't want to confuse anybody. Um, so you, if you don't sign that away, then you still have that right. So you can send a cease and desist if you see that your files are being used for machine learning purposes or your voice is on a database somewhere. If there was no contract at the beginning, that's going to help. So those are the kind of things that I've been, I've been seeing. If there's no um, contract, it'll help. If there's no contract, well, ironically enough, yes. If there's a contract, well, if there's a contract that doesn't cover this, I that will help too. Okay. But if the contract, most of the contracts that I'm seeing, they were they were setting this up for it right now. So they were saying, we're going to use this for artificial intelligence. We're going to clone your voice. We're going to use it for any purpose we want in perpetuity. Commercial, it could be a commercial, you know, and they spell it all out. And we're using it for Amazon or, you know, you know mm. say that's the kind of stuff it says in those contracts. So look for those words. So I get it. So I don't know why people signed those contracts. I mean, and those are the contracts that I, when I did review, I would call them career, career suicide contracts. <laughs> like, why are you going to do this? You don't know what they're going to use this for. They're saying they can use this for anything in the world, anytime. So like right now you're getting 10 grand, but who knows what's going to happen three, four or five years from now. So why are you signing that contract? Like it, it, it's without that knowledge, without knowledge, it's really hard to agree to things. I think a lot you know of I mean? us are just put off by by the verboseness of a, a legal contract and how long and how difficult it can be to read through them. Is is there anything that we should be, you know, is by paragraph or by words, is there anything we should be looking for? Well, first of all, the longer and the more complex the, the contract is, have it look by a lawyer. <laughs> Pay a couple hundred bucks and have a lawyer look it over. Like that's well, that's our job. That, that's why we went to law school. Right. So that should be the first clue. If you have a 14 page contract that was sent to you, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be something in there or more than one thing in there that I'm going to find that's going to be not in your favor. So just get it looked over. If it's something that's simpler, a couple of pages, focus on the usage 
focus on how if you you know i mean i've heard i'm sure many people have heard this already in perpetuity if you see that word you have to break that down it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's something that if you can't if you don't have to agree to it don't <laughs> because first of all nothing lives in perpetuity nothing right so why are you going to agree to in perpetuity all that means is they haven't thought about the usage that's what that means because so you want to have them think how are you going to use this ask that question you know what is your intention oh we don't know client doesn't know well let's figure it out <laughs> because <laughs> let's find out yeah you know then you can you can base your price on that you can you know you can make lots of decisions based on that but so if you in perpetuity is, a, is definitely a word now i'm not saying that don't sign any contract that says it's in perpetuity but just you need yeah. to do a little more digging on it yeah, let's get um, to these questions, Dan. Yeah, like we've got one. This is relating to that. Venus Crute asks, Rob, do you feel that the rates they're offering to do the learning AI type is fair? Depends on, completely depends on the job. So I've seen them from about for $1,000. I've just negotiated one for 20. So it really just depends on, on who's, hiring you and what they're using it for and what, you know, if they're going to, sometimes they'll say they're going to do machine learning and a con they're going to use your files to combine it with other voices to come up with another voice. Sometimes I'll say that in the contract and those generally pay more than if they're just using it for machine learning. So it, it's, I don't see a standard in, in anywhere there. And I, it, it really is, you know, if like a big company's hiring you, generally they're going to pay more than if it's just a small, uh, you know, fly by night little run a couple of company pop that pops up that's just doing this to make a buck so and there are there are those companies that just popped up to make a buck and they're not going to be around long yeah ko voice asks on a question we were just talking about if you say at the top of the audition this audio is for audition purpose audition purposes only is that enough oh you just gave him another line they could sample <laughs> <laughs> no it, it doesn't mean anything just, it, it doesn't get the, the computer doesn't just they don't understand what i mean they, they kind of understands because it's ai but it doesn't matter like they're just doing that uh, to, to train the computer how to speak better so it, it, it no that doesn't there's no legal protection in that yeah, yeah not at all not okay. at all okay rivka rothstein asks do you know anything about the <laughs> privacy laws that different voice cloning services abide by. For instance, if the, uh, she wanted to create her own AI voice through something like E11 Labs, yep. what privacy do they you know, do they ensure? That's a good question. There are some legitimate ones, 11 Labs, Murph, um, and they, they're gonna spell out what they're gonna use your voice for. So they're either gonna put it up on the database or they're gonna use it for machine learning. And they all, they all have, if they're legit, they'll have a, paragraph in their contract that says what, how they're going to protect. They're going to use reasonable industry standards to protect your voice from being hacked. Um, you know, they'll, they'll use that kind of language. And they'll also have language in there about when you, the, the fair ones will say that the contract's only valid for, you know, a year or two years or whatever term you want to pick. And it'll also say what happens at the end of that term, that they're going to give you the voice back. They're going to destroy the files. They're going to destroy them after a period of time, whatever. It'll say what happens when the contract's over. So those are the things that you want to look for if you're considering cloning your voice from a legit company. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, follow up on that. Uh, which of these voice cloning companies have the best reputations? Do you have any insight on that yet? Respeacher, Murph, 11 Labs. Uh, what's the other one? It starts with an R. I forget it, but there's another one. There's like four or five of them that Revoicer. I see. Revoicer, that's it. I see over and over again that, uh, that you know have legit um, contracts, and mo a lot of, most of those, I think, all of them have actually consulted with me. <laughs> so that's because you know they'll be saying uh, voice actors going with the same changes to the contracts, and they're like, "Hey, are you using the same lawyer?" And then they'll you know will end up going over their contracts and kind of making it so that they go get built into all their contracts. So I, I've talked to many of those, those companies. All right. Uh, Liz Dineshnera 
uh, says, if we decide to clone our voice, what basics should we look for in an agreement? Well, um, the ones I just mentioned. Time, time period. You need to uh, mute. There, there we go. Okay. Time period is big, a big one. So you should, when you're signing a, a contract, you should have be able to set a period of time. So, you know, a year, two years, some kind of term. It shouldn't be forever. You should be able to try it out, make sure it's working out for you, and then be able to terminate the contract if it's not. So that's a big one for me. Um, some kind of residual. You know, some if they're gonna they're gonna pay pay you for usage. So you know, ten percent, twenty percent, whatever you negotiate. Um, so if they're as they're selling the the uh, the voice. You're getting a piece, some kind of say over who gets to use the voice. So you're not running into a conflict situation, you know, mm. so being able to veto certain voice, certain jobs, that's, that's another thing that you should try to put into the contracts. And, and most of them are okay with that. What happens to storage? You know, are they going to make sure you, you don't want that to be hacked? You don't want it to be used for uh, generative AI out, you know, in, in the general public, you want it behind some kind of firewall that's usually in there. Um, what else? Um, what happens when, uh, with the files, when you leave, is it, your, does it belong to you? Do you get it back? Um, do you have to, or, you know, are they going to destroy it? You know, what are they going to do when the contract's over? You know, those are big terms that you want covered in, in, in a, in an agreement. All right. Uh, Joe Nangle. Hey, Joe, how's it going? So there is no legal verbiage we can add to our websites to protect the use of our demos for cloning purposes? Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can put all those disclaimers up that you want, but they're not. If someone, first of all, you, they can't clone your voice. That is not, a, that's not legal. The only thing that can happen is that they can, scan the files and then it will use as part of some other generative AI thing that you're not going to recognize. So they can't just take your file off your website and clone your voice. That's, that's illegal, right? That's what the fraud uh, act just said. And, and it's, it's illegal use of your likeness. So, and plus it's probably your file is yours. You own it. So it's probably a violation of copyright too. So you don't need that disclaimer because it's already illegal. All you're trying when you put the disclaimer up, what are you gonna do? Prevent someone from that wants to break the law from breaking the law, <laughs> right? I mean, if someone's gonna break the law, they're gonna break the law. It doesn't matter what it says on, on the uh, on the screen, and they may be from China, so they probably can't read it anyway. So <laughs> I'm joking around, but you know what I mean. <laughs> if you if the disclaimer, if someone wants to break the law, it doesn't you know? It, like if it's like putting a no trespassing sign up on your property. Look at it that way, all right. So if they're gonna trespass on your property, they, they care that the damn signs there. What that doesn't make a difference, right? It may deter some people, but it's not gonna. It's not binding. It's not gonna do anything. All right, Karen. Uh, no, Catherine Gaffney asks, "What's the best way to find out if your voice is out there and being used without permission?" That's a great question. That's one I don't have an answer to. So most people rely on their colleagues telling them that, uh, hey, I heard your voice here or there. You know, just like if you there's a, a commercial that's running that you did that was not supposed to be running anymore and someone sees it somewhere and that that's really the only way. But there is technology that's being developed so that you'll be able to trace, you'll be able to talk, give a sample of your voice, and then that sample lives on the on a uh, server and then it, it you know you can compare other anywhere else on the internet to that sample so that's in development how, how soon will it be coming out do you think rob um uh, i think pretty soon actually because oh, yeah? i've seen i've seen the um i've seen the posts for people to start putting up their samples some so, betas some betas yeah so pretty soon that's good all right uh, Elizabeth Oaks uh, asks, so what phrases or provisions in contracts should be red flags or lined out? Absolutely. 
Um, anything that says that they have the right to, well, first of all, they're going to own the, own your files. So if they take ownership, if it says uh, it's a work for hire, it's their own the copyright. You know, you have to. It may be okay for them to have ownership, but you have to put a caveat or a rider in saying that they're not going to use your um, voice for cloning purposes. So that that's first ownership in perpetuity. Any usage that they want, we're going to use the, the files for anything that we want in the future for it, be it commercial, be it, you know, narration, they'll list a whole bunch of things. You know, those are, that's a red flag. If they're going to take the files and, and there's no way to terminate the contract. So if it says that they can use it for whatever they want and there's no time limit on there um, and there's no way for you to terminate, that's, that's a red flag. Um, and you'll generally see these all in, like one paragraph, it'll all be together. It'll say, we own these files. You own, you have no say over future use um, forever and in, in perpetuity. And, you know, it's usually all in one paragraph that you'll see it. So, and sometimes you can't cross those out. Sometimes, you know, if, if you cross them out, they're going to say they don't, they're not going to do the job with you. So that's just something that you have to decide if it's, a worthy risk to take on for the, for the amount of money you're getting paid or if you know if you're going to pass on the job so and that's something that some talent some talent have to decide talent yeah. that i advise too they, they, that, that's not my call it's theirs so uh liz dinesh your follow-up question at do we own the clone version that somebody's made of us Obviously. that would be a contract yeah so some 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 companies allow you to own the voice and your license to get back to them for a period of time. Other companies want to take ownership and then their license to get your license to get from them basically to use it. So it, uh, it really just depends on every company's different. So that's a negotiation point though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Karen Clark asks, should we groups like Wovo start conversations with pay to play platforms regarding protecting our auditions. You mentioned something like firewalls. Yes, I, I think that uh, you absolutely should. Um, and I would wow. even dig deeper than that and, and, and make sure that they're looking out for the talent and not for themselves when they're, you know, they're giving permission to, for the, the clients to use files for AI purposes or where they're doing other things that they shouldn't be doing posting auditions that they shouldn't be posting in the first place. So I would dig even, I would dig deeper. I would, I would want them to, you know, sign some kind of code of best practices or something as on AI jobs. So. Would, would you be willing to help us Wovo uh, in coming up with some, some language that we of could course. present to those casting services? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that there's stuff I see over and over again. And it's stories I hear over and over again, uh, you know, abuses. So, yeah. so you're at the apex of this <clears throat> issue. What troubles you the most about where it's going? Uh, not necessarily troubling me, but um, I, I can see I, the, the unknowing part is the part that troubles me the most mm. because it could it could go where I don't think it's the human element's ever going to come out go out of arts. I don't think that that's ever going to happen, but how much from your lips to God's ears? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think it will. Like, yeah, I, 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 no, I agree. But, um, but how much we're going to try. Well, of course they are because, uh, you know, producers, but I don't even think the producers want to take the full human element out. I yep. think they're, they're trying to make their jobs easier and I can see it. I'm a producer too. So <laughs> I see it from that side. I don't want to call these people back into new ADR. I just, just let me clone your voice and do the lines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I can match it up much easier <laughs> on the computer. If I, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think they want to take the human element out, but they just want to make their job easier. I think what the scary part is, is how far, like how far, how much of it they're going to, they want to take out of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. do they want to take out 75% of it. Do they want to take out 50 they want to take out 90 like how how far is it going to go that's 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 the part mm -hmm. that that troubles me um and then it, the generative ai part like that part has to get worked out by um law right like there we because that they can just generate all new characters all new 
faces, all new voices. and So it's a wild west until those laws come into force. Right. And I don't know how good the technology is right now to be able to create 100% human looking likenesses or voices through generative AI by combining. But that's what they're working on right now. Those are the jobs that are going on that the voice actors are doing right now to, to perfect that part of the process. You know, the ones that are paid 20 grand, that's what they're doing. The machine learning, they're, they're perfecting that generative AI part of the process. So we're kind of at the end stage of this now. You know, at the being, beginning stages, they were just, you know, there was the, the, the robotic type voices that they're taking samples for, you know, now it's more, now they're getting to the, we're doing the generative AI part now where we're going to combine a whole bunch of voices by computer, a whole bunch of images by computer and come up with something that looks perfectly human and you're not going to be able to tell, right? That's what they're working on now. Mm -hmm. So I was reading an article about uh, game voices, uh, gamer voices and producers who do those uh, electronic games. And they're saying AI comes in really handy to protect the voices of um, voice actors who have to grunt and scream and yell, uh, they can clone those yes. interjections yes. And, and save the actor's voice. Yes, th that's true. Um, and again, it just depends on how far, how Another far possible gonna, use, yeah. how far they're going to take it. So yeah. you know, they're going to just get rid of the actor altogether, or, or they, you know, they just get, is that where they're going right. to stop? So and that's that's the scary part, and that, that's what sure Sega was wrestling with. Right. And that's the scary part for all of us. Like that's, that's what we're, we're worried about. And there's really no way to answer that question, but I just don't, I personally being involved with this for, you know, since kind of the beginning, I personally don't think that there, the human element is going to be removed completely. Like I Where think the creativity that, comes in. Yeah. yeah the creativity that, you know, the, the connection, you know, right. and I don't, I, until I don't know. If a robot is going to be able to make a human connection, I don't know when that day will happen. It might, might, but like I don't know when that will will be, and I don't know when that will be accepted by the you know the, the us humans will accept connections with with robots and AI. So I I, yeah. I think we're you know I think I think it's a way long ways down the road. Yeah. So yeah, Phil uh, Cola Catronis asks. Um, even if a legit AI company, of course, what is a legit AI company, agreed to destroy your voice files after a defined period of time, wouldn't they still have access if they did a disaster recovery of their file system at some later time? Well, that's what the contract's for. So if they're agreeing to destroy the files and they don't, that's what happened. That was the case that I was telling you about. They decided, they said they were going to destroy the voice, take it down. They paid for that. <laughs> And then they, they made a mistake and <laughs> ended up going back up. And so now they're going to be paying triple what they paid the first time because now we have a contract, we had an agreement and they breached it. So, you know, if, if, if that would actually be a good thing <laughs> for, for you if that happened, because just call me and we'll, you know, we'll, I can file the lawsuit right there. It's easy for a judge to read a contract. So they violated it. All righty. Uh, Ellen Richards, uh, so, should we copyright copyright our demos that are posted online? Uh, no, you don't have to do that. Um, again, you're not going to know. You're not going to know if someone's using your uh, little teeny piece of your demo for generative AI. We don't know <clears throat> because the computer just does it automatically, and they do it in the background. You know, they don't tell you, "Hey, I used your demo," <laughs> right? And then. So it's only if someone was going to steal it and then use it to clone your voice. And, but you, you, don't, you can still go after them for that. Like they can't, that's still not legal under, our, under U.S. law, pretty much the whole world law. You can't, you can't do that. So I don't think you need to copyright. copyright. It's the same challenge well, the, that artists and photographers have is that the right. AI is going out and grabbing snippets of their product exactly. and incorporating it into some, some other amalgam. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. what you're saying. Yeah, that's the case. That that's those are the cases that were filed. You know, the uh, photographers, artists, and New York Times well, already filed lawsuits against uh, ChatGPT, and that's what that's what the cause of action is that they're using snippets of my work and violating copyright. And like I said, courts are like, you know, it's still running through the courts, but the initial reaction of the judges were like, well, prove, prove me, prove it to me, yeah. and yeah, I'll you know I'll be more sympathetic kind of thing. So. Mm. 
Well, let's look at it from from an, an, another perspective, uh, because laws come from legislation. Are we seeing any real action in Congress uh, or the Senate or in the federal government to tr- really try to address this particular situation? Yes, yes, that's what that's what I said. It was a big step forward with the Fraud Act because they specifically addressed AI. Um, deep faking is one of the big parts of that case or that law. Like they're they're. They were like when Joe Biden got deep faked, <laughs> like that. That's why it got over the finish line, pushed over the finish line. But now they're talking about more. They're working on more of the nuances. And they've been working on it for a while. You know, FTC had a whole, a whole. Um, they've been having hearings on on this for a long time. Um, so yes, they are actively working on it. They did pass a big part of the law. You know, and made it fraudulent. So that's good. Um, the artist part of it's going to, that's a whole other, that's a whole other arm. Like that's, that's a very specialized, like they're, they're, the laws that they're passing are for the general public now. Like it's for everybody. You know what I mean? So like now when they're moving on to artists, that's, it's more of a specialized, we're a specialized group. So we're, we're just not as big as of a priority as to, you know, the, the, this is a huge issue that they're trying to tackle. So, you know, eventually it will get there. The courts will help, you know, as, as more lawsuits be, are brought, you know, there'll be precedent that will be set. So that's going to help FTC now doing regulations. They'll be able to help. So, and I know that every state has something pending, like every single state, you can go online and there's a, a website where you can track AI, AI laws and what every state's doing. So I forget the name of the site, but. Yeah, that um, because Facebook is probably not the place to get the definitive uh, answers on these questions. I mean, no. it's good to hear the conversation, but never, um, never yes. has been. Yeah, yeah yes. no. <laughs> Facebook is good for raising issues, but it's not good for resolving right. them. Right, <laughs> that's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, once again, if you've got a question for Rob, uh, there is a Q and A uh, bot at the bottom of the uh, Zoom window there and i'm sure this probably raises more questions than it answers but figure uh if you go in there you can ask that question we'll get that right to rob uh rivka rothstein asks get what kind of official copyright process if any should we think about going through if we were to clone our own voice um if you clone the voice and own it then you just register with the copyright office the u.s copyright office it's simple. You fill out the form, and sound before? recording. Yeah, you can. You can. You you record your what you're cloning are the the sound recordings. So you're not recording the actual. You can't record the cloned voice because that's that's a that's a result. Like the voice the voice pieces everything together and then it comes out with another file, right? So you have to it's the data files that you have to copyright. So the the, the actual recordings that you made that they use to create your clone voice. So those are, that's what you register. You just register them as sound recordings with the copyright office. And then if those files are being used and you, you know, like if it's a straight clone and you can recognize you, then that's a violation of copyright. If it's the part where it's, it's still up in the air is if they're taking just little, you know, little snippets, little teeny pieces, and they're create, combining it with all 10,000 other voices since they come up with a new voice. Like that's the part where the, the copyright office, you, know, you can't really enforce your copyright because you can't prove. Right. That's it, you. it would be hard to determine anyway, if, if they've created a, uh, a homogenous voice of lots of different people. Elizabeth Oaks asks, are there any big court cases pending that we should watch? She was disappointed with the recent dismissal of some of the cases in the Sarah Silverman uh, generative AI case. The, the cases that everyone are watching are the ones against ChatGPT, the ones uh, brought by the New York Times, brought by the photographers, and brought by the, the artists. Those are the ones to keep your eye on. Um, that de- are the ones that deal with generative AI. So. We'll see what the, you know, we're going to see where the courts come down on that. Um, if they're going to, if they say that uh, it's, you know, you'll only have to prove a little teeny piece and then you're protected, or if they're going to say that you, you need to have more proof that it's you or your work. And then the other thing is keep your eye on the copyright office because the copyright office, like I said, they're not filing any new copyrights for generative AI. So 
if for instance, like I, my dog, my dog example earlier, if I want a picture of a dog, a unique dog, and I go on chat GPT and it comes, brings me this nice new combined dog. And I don't want to copyright that. I use it in a child children's book or something. And I want to copyright it. The copyright office is going to say they're going to deny the copyright. My, that actually happened to my daughter. My daughter wrote a children's book. She hired an illustrator. The illustrator went on chat GPT and did all the illustrations and the copyright office denied her, denied her copyright. So, mm-hmm. um, Again, well, this is brought to you by worldvoices.org. Uh, feel free to join us if you're not a member and you get to uh, find out all these great uh, questions and uh, answers because that's what we have. Um, again, this, this will be available on, uh, on, on our website. Uh, if you go into, if you're a member, we, can, uh, we will post this in the, uh, the World Voices website and uh, you'll be able to watch this again if you missed some of it or all of it. Uh, I guess to finish up, uh, Rob, again, why don't we review what are some of the things that people can do to make sure that they're protecting themselves? Read the fine print. Yeah, read well, them. so let, let me talk about this a little bit because I, I also, the thing that I've seen that is a little disturbing to me and actually a little humorous, people are focused so much on AI that they're missing all the other bad language and contracts <laughs> that are screwing them over. Mm. So, yes, protect yourself from AI. So put something in, make sure there's something in the contract that says that they're not going to use your files for to clone your voice or for machine learning, right? Yes, put that in there. But don't forget about the rest of the contract. <laughs> like the rest of the contract may have yes, bad so things in there too yeah. that you want to, to, so you can't just like, sure, AI is, it some, is something to think about, but it's just added to the list of things that you needed to think about before. Right. So that's, I'm seeing a very hyper focused concentration of people just look reviewing contracts for AI stuff and they're forgetting all the other stuff that, that they have to look out for in contracts. So, hmm. you know, put, make sure that you have, make sure if the contract doesn't say already that if they're not going to use your, your files for um, cloning purposes or machine learning purposes, that you, add that to the contract. So that's for this issue, but don't forget to review the whole contract as well. All righty. Well, thanks everybody for joining us this morning. This has been very enlightening. Rob, if they want some legal help, where do they go about this? So they can come to my website, which is Rob Sig ESQ, R O B S C I G E S Q.com. And I also just started up a membership program beginning of the year called the 30 on demand pay a monthly fee and you get one contract review per month, one draft per month. You get discounts on free copyrights. You get discounts on trademarks and LLCs and it's just for artists. So attorneyondemand.com. Boy, thanks for all your expertise, Rob. You're just a wealth of knowledge on this. And um, I I guess to summarize, uh, be proactive, be aware, read the fine print, stay with it, stay with the trends on this because they're developing fast. And read between the lines on uh, auditions. Uh, read between the lines. Yeah. If they're asking you to read a whole bunch of lines, you know, you're going to read 10,000 words. Automatically think that's yeah. for a, some kind of AI job. Like automatically think. So yeah. just read between the lines on what they're asking you. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us this morning. We appreciate your, your attendance. Uh, I'll also post this on our uh, our Facebook page, so if you missed it, you'll be able to see it there too as well. Rob, thanks again so much for joining us this morning and uh, for continuing your legal eagle attack at all this stuff and letting us all know what's going on out there. My pleasure. All righty. Take care, everybody. We'll see you for our next webinar, which is we're not sure where it's going to be, but we got lots of topics. <laughs> You'll be good, and, though. <laughs> yeah. If you, ha- if you have a topic you'd like us to cover, please uh, let us know uh, at info at worldvoices.org. We'll be glad to hear from you. Take care. Have a great, uh, have a great week, everybody.